Hi, welcome to this video where I'll be talking about Azure Kubernetes service using pod identity to access the Azure SQL uh, database. So the session objectives will show kind of the architecture where it has the uh, ASP.NET web app in AKS accessing the Azure SQL database, uh, which is a PaaS service. What is deployed in the AKS cluster is the Azure uh, AD kind of pod identity open source uh, software. And the benefit of uh, pod identity is the ability to not use connection strings. So the application design, the ASP.NET Core web app, it is based on the Oracle build an ASP.NET Core and SQL database app in Azure App Service. Uh, it is a simple to-do list application, as you can see in the screenshot on the right, just to uh, create new record, edit, uh, see the details and delete. Uh, uses entity framework uh, as a data access layer, as many of you know, it's based on .NET Core 3.1 and uses a NuGet package, azure.services.appauthentication to enable the application to authenticate against Azure AD supported uh, Azure services, such as Azure SQL database. In this application, in the app settings.json, well, we define a connection string, which does not have any username and password. All it has is the the URL or the host name to the uh, SQL server and the Azure uh, database name. So what is this Azure AD pod identity all about? Well, again, it is a open source solution you can find on GitHub. Uh, I have the link to it in the video description, but let's take a look at at very high level what how it works and what it does. So uh, we have here a, a pod in AKS and in it ha is a container of, let's say the ASP.NET Core web app, right? Its goal is to have access to a, you know, Azure AD supported Azure resource, right? And this could be Azure storage, Azure SQL, or Azure Key Vault, right? So what it does is that the, uh, the pod requests a token using kind of its kind of assigned or mapped um, managed identity, right? And then it authenticates against Azure AD. If successful, gets a token issued to the pod. And then the pod can then go to the Azure resource. Uh, in this case, it's trying to authenticate against uh, Key Vault. Right, and then Key Vault will see that okay, it knows uh, who it is because it's been authenticated uh, with the provided token, and will go against Azure AD to see uh, permissions or authorization right on what it can do based on uh, assigned permissions. That is kind of how that works, right? And you can go to this link down here to check it out and to deploy it into your AKS cluster. So let's take another uh, look at uh, pod identity uh, more from a operational point of view or granular, more detailed uh, kind of workflow in setting it up. So first off, you know, you have cluster operator or systems engineer that kind of manages the Kubernetes infrastructure and that will deploy that will create a kind of Azure identity binding that will map between a pod and a managed identity. And number two, the NMI server and the MIC server, uh, which is uh, deployed uh, through the uh, pod identity uh, open source uh, solution. Those are used to kind of handle the um, the workflow uh, for the pod uh, to make a request to a Azure resource to get an access token, right, from Azure AD. Third, developer can deploy the pod with the managed identity that requests an access token through the NMI server. Uh, 
And lastly, the token is returned to the pod and used to access Azure SQL database. So here I just wanted to show the role of the NMI server and the MIC managed identity controller that is deployed that handles that whole process from pod accessing Azure SQL through a managed identity. So let's take a look at the general architecture that I built out in this demo. First of all, we have your AKS cluster. It's associated to a VNet. Uh, it's just a uh, standard uh, Nginx ingress controller that will handle external traffic into your your uh, your web application hosted inside Kubernetes cluster. In this case, is that ASP.NET Core uh, application as a Kubernetes de uh, deployment and uh, we have that NMI and MIC, right, that is deployed, uh, again, with that Azure AD pod identity solution, okay? And I put it in, in its own namespace. And so, of course, uh, Azure AD is definitely part of the flow and part of the overall architecture. And the managed identity I created is uh, assigned to the uh, cluster. And in this case, which is optional, I created an Azure AD group that will contain this uh, managed identity of which that group has um, certain permissions uh, to the Azure SQL database. So what is the high level setup process? First of all, of course, you need a AKS cluster with the managed identity enabled. And so through your uh, cluster creation process, make sure it's enabled, uh, managed identity will get created. Uh, of course, you need an Azure SQL database. And uh, after it's created, ensure that that managed identity is, cr is created. So if we look in the Azure uh, portal, I can show kind of what that looks like. So I'm in that um, uh, infrastructure resource group of the AKS cluster. And in it, we can see a bunch of things that's been created. But one thing in particular is that you can find the managed identity that can be used uh, that is associated to the Kubernetes uh, cluster. So, and next, again, you install the Azure AD pod identity open source software. That includes the NMI, NMI daemon set and managed identity controller. And um, include in your ASP.NET web application the app settings, right, to update the connection string and install the uh, NuGet package, Microsoft.Azure.Service.App authentication and update the entity framework kind of dbcontext.cs file. So uh, next, create the Kubernetes manifest to map the Azure identity to the, the pods. It will include the Azure identity kind of Kubernetes resource, uh, Azure identity binding, and uh, adjusting the deployment YAML with an Azure AD pod, uh, AD pod ID binding label. And then uh, configure your Azure SQL database uh, you have to kind of log into the Azure SQL database and grant uh, role permissions to the managed identity or to the Azure AD group that contains the managed identity, whichever way you choose. So here I'll show kind of more of a detailed kind of a step by step view of kind of the, the setup and configuration process. Right, so again, here's that uh, architecture as, as I laid up before. Again, update the app settings, okay? Here, we just need SQL Server uh, host name, as well as the database name. And as you can see, the whole point of this uh, approach is not to have uh, SQL credentials or passwords in the connection string. Next is that the application needs to have the NuGet package, Microsoft.Azure.Services.App authentication. Uh, this will help with authenticating to Azure, Azure resources using the uh, managed identity.
And once that's set up, uh, you have to have a YAML file of the Azure Identity Custom Resource, right? That will reference uh, the AKS Demo Managed Identity. And update the deployment uh, YAML file of your application just to have a label AD pod ID binding and then kind of an uh, arbitrary name. Or right here, I'm just uh, referring to this uh, managed identity. And to uh, bridge between the two, we need an Azure, a Azure identity binding that will bridge the gap, will map between the two uh, with the selector to this label value. And so once you have all this set up, you deploy or redeploy your deployment YAML of your hosted application. The managed identity controller will uh, pick up and watch for these changes and will register or assign the pod identity to this uh, Azure AD managed identity. Note that in my setup, I had the uh, RKAKS demo managed a member of this Azure AD group that I created. And I have to go into the database, right, log in and grant role permissions uh, to this group as like, uh, for example, data reader and uh, DB uh, data writer. And once I've done that, we can kind of test the application a user clicks save, perhaps, and what happens is that the pod will request uh, access for the access token from Azure AD, of where of which then Azure AD will authenticate. And remember that the NMI helps with this uh, with this process uh, to get that access token, right? Because it it now knows that there's a mapping between this pod and this this managed identity. Okay, and once it has that, uh, it can go ahead and uh, with the help of this uh, NuGet package, will access the DB with the access token and Azure SQL will then, you know, authorize and, and check the permissions against Azure AD again and will respond and provide the, um, uh, the data, all right, being saved. And so that, that's how that works. And so to show a little demonstration of the uh, application, it's, so here's my to-do list application. And create a new record. Uh, let's see, uh, publish a YouTube video perhaps. Uh, set a date, hit create. And this is activity or this uh, database save is happening against the Azure SQL database. So here's my uh, ASP.NET Core web application. And here is my app settings uh, JSON, which has the configuration for the connection string to my Azure SQL database. As you can see, there's no password or credentials needed. Okay, and the next place you need to do, ensure that you have this um, uh, NuGet package. And if we look at the uh, database context CS file, so here is the my database context file, okay, as part of uh, entity uh, framework, right? So, you know. You just need these this two lines of code, right, to establish the connection, the database connection, right, and to retrieve the access token. Um, and in this in particular, this is for the uh, Azure SQL database, right? This would change if you're doing uh, going against Azure Key Vault or Azure Storage or other Azure service that supports um, Azure AD uh, authentication. So here is uh, my Azure SQL database, 
okay, where I've kind of logged into the query editor as the kind of the database admin. And so this is where um, you can have Azure SQL database uh, grant uh, permissions to that Azure AD group that contains the managed identity uh, per my design and implementation. So uh, in order to do that, right, this is the uh, Azure AD group, right, called Azure AD DB principles uh, that I've named, okay, you have to run it, uh, create a, a user as this, and then uh, alter the role, uh, giving it data reader and data writer to this Azure AD uh, group. Okay, so I, I've already ran this prior, but uh, to see the configuration that uh, to validate that the setup, I have this um, uh, SQL uh, statement here. Okay, and when I hit run, okay, it will uh, show me uh, the permissions right to kind of the database users right so uh, so again prior to this i've already uh, assigned the data reader and data writer so this is how uh, this has been set up and how you can verify that and then this will again will allow that application um, using uh, managed identity to access this uh, database Right to do to query and to uh, you know add and update uh, database records. So uh, here we can see the uh, the to do list um, uh, database tables. Okay, so uh, let's just see uh, the, what that looks like in terms of the records. So select star to do. Uh, whoops, star from and run that, and we have uh, these records that I've created. Uh, so, in conclusion, I like to point out that you know whether or not you're using AKS or not. You know, use managed identity wherever you can, right? Um, this can be an Azure VM with a system assigned or user assigned managed identity, and that can access things like Cosmos DB or Azure Key Vault or Azure uh, Storage Account, right? And without the need of storing any credentials in any kind of config file. Right, so it just makes the whole process more streamlined because um, you have uh, all these Azure services and resources that can leverage the power of Azure AD authentication, authorization, you know, all, all in the under one roof, right, which is the Azure platform. And so I highly suggest uh, to read the supporting articles that help me um, with uh, building out this demo. So look at the video description for that. Um, I also have a blog article written out. Uh, you can go to uh, roykim.ca. Uh, highly encourage you to try to build this uh, type of solution yourself, right? Gain some knowledge, gain some experience, uh, and take it further in your workplace uh, projects. Appreciate your support in subscribing my channel like comments and hit notify for upcoming videos. Thank you very much.